In this video, we're going to be revealing what happened to the most hated WWE fans and what they're doing today. Let's start with the fan who attacked Seth Rollins on Monday Night Raw. Fight was starting in the beginning. Uh, we're obviously not going to have a match. I mean, look, look at the condition. Oh, what? What? Who's, who's that? The guy's name is Eliza Spencer. In true villain arc fashion, his story starts in 2019, two years before his literal run-in with Seth Rollins. Spencer was at a meet and greet event and got to speak with the Monday Night Messiah. Eliza was an aspiring wrestler and asked Seth for advice. How Rollins responded was not shared, but soon after, Eliza began chatting with someone on WhatsApp who he believed was Seth Rollins. The account claiming to be the WWE superstar asked Spencer to blog for him as well as send him gift cards in exchange for money. The young wrestling hopeful wanted to work his way up and did what he was told, sending about $3,000 in gift cards to the supposed Seth Rollins. Spencer was then given a check to reimburse him for the gift cards, but it bounced. Despite this, the reason Eliza attacked Rollins didn't have anything to do with money. Spencer claimed that he was actually trying to help Seth's opponent that night, Finn Balor. Eliza Spencer said, My plan was to help Finn Balor. I'm a fan. I like his aura, his attitude. I like everything about his charisma. I like everything about him. Of course, Eliza's plan was quickly thwarted, and he was taken into custody by the New York Police Department. After being booked, Spencer was charged with attempted assault and disrupting a live sporting event. Spencer was then released in order to appear in court at a future date. The next day, Seth Rollins would address the attack. Should they allow him back or ban him from life? No, for life? I think as a precedent, um, uh, we should not be allowed at the event. He should be banned for life? For yeah, life? I mean, you know, I'm always open to forgiveness if I get chance. It's not me, at least. Despite what Rollins said, the attacker would be allowed to attend another WWE event. In December 2021, WWE hosted a show at Madison Square Garden. Eliza Spencer took to social media to share that he was in attendance. Despite fans alerting WWE, Spencer said he enjoyed the show uninterrupted. Seth Rollins was not there, and thankfully, no incidents occurred. In the aftermath of his attack, Eliza ended up getting off very easily. Rollins was asked if he wanted to press charges, which he had every right to do. However, Seth learned that his attacker mentally wasn't all there and chose not to go after Eliza Spencer. He was arrested by the, the police that night and, and like they asked if I wanted to press charges and um, I, you know, I didn't. I, I just, I asked that the, that the NYPD just try to find a way to help him. I think he posted a video the next day when he like had made bail or something like that and it was clear that he was not in a proper state. I did it for Rakish. I did it for The Rock. I did it for all my tribal family. I kind of got what was going on. So when they started following up, I was like, look, I don't, this guy doesn't need to go to prison. He needs help. Oh, like he yeah. needs some help. So if there's anything, any services you guys offer for, you know, people in situations like this, please, you know, do that on my behalf. You're so good guy. Since the incident, Spencer appears to have kept himself out of trouble. He stays active on social media under the name Royal Fatu. Judging by his posts, Spencer appears to still be an active wrestling fan and has aspirations of becoming a WWE wrestler. According to his bio, the now 26 year old currently works as a sales associate for Macy's in New York. Eliza was very fortunate that he attacked Seth Rollins. The fan who attacked Randy Orton was not. <laughs> Randy Orton's attacker was a man named Hishepiso Sakabi. He got introduced to wrestling at the age of 7 and quickly became a fan. When he was 16, Hishepiso stepped inside the ropes and started training to be a wrestler. He eventually performed on local shows, but his goal was to be part of WWE. The issue for Hishepiso was that he didn't know how to do that or who to talk to. That's when he had an idea. I wanted like, to show them what I can do. I didn't know who was I talk to and then in my own mind I thought, you know what, what if I get in there, I punch somebody, maybe from there, there will be questions like, why did you do that? And then I'll get to answer like, hey guys, I want to be part of this. Tshepi so had his opportunity in 2013 when WWE was doing a tour of South Africa. The WWE hopeful quit his job in order to be at the event, and once he arrived, he waited for an opportunity. After Randy Orton won his match, Tshepi so jumped over the guardrail and attacked the Apex Predator. Security quickly swarmed the ring and took Tshepi so away. Despite the chaos, Orton managed to kick the trespasser in the face and give him a black eye. After being escorted from the ring, Tshepi so was taken to the arena's security office. A camera was filming, and being a true professional, Tshepi. So stayed in character. Randy Orton, wherever you are, man, you owe me. I'm the wrestling machine. I'm coming, Randy. I'm after the money in the fan case. I'm after the briefcase. I'm after that. And I will get it because in everything I do in this world, I keep on shining, surviving. <sighs> 
After that, Tishepisa went to his hotel room and, the next day, made a court appearance. He pleaded guilty to trespassing, but since Randy Orton wasn't injured, and because it was a first time offense, Tishepiso only had to pay a fine of 500 Rand, or about 50 US dollars at the time. When asked if he received a lifetime ban from WWE, here's what Tishepiso said. People were saying that you were banned from like WWE events forever, so is that true? Like, can you not go to a WWE event for the rest of your life? Nah, uh uh, that is so not true. In the aftermath, Tshepiso continued to pursue his dream of becoming a WWE wrestler and stayed active in the South African wrestling scene. A shoulder injury in 2018 put Tshepiso on the sidelines and he'd ultimately retire. Today, at the age of 30, Tshepiso works as a manager at a supply chain logistics company called RTT. The rogue WWE fan also got engaged in 2021 and has begun his own family. While Tshepiso didn't fulfill his dream of becoming a WWE wrestler, he seems to have a happy life. This next fan likely can't say the same. At the 2019 WB Hall of Fame, a 26-year-old man named Zachary Madsen attacked 61-year-old Bret Hart. This wasn't the first time Madsen had done something illegal. The Lincoln, Nebraska native had been arrested three times prior to the incident with Hart. The arrest came for stalking an MMA fighter and violating protective orders. It was clear that Madsen had some issues, which is likely what led him to attack Bret Hart. After being swarmed by security and roughed up by some wrestlers, Zachary Madsen was taken to the New York City Police Department's 78th Precinct. He remained in jail for four days until being released on a $1,500 bond. Madsen was also hit with two assault charges and one criminal trespassing charge. On top of that, the judge also issued protective orders which barred Zachary from going near Bret Hart as well as a WWE security guard that the Nebraska man injured. Madsen didn't give much of a reason for why he attacked Bret Hart. All that he said was, just felt like it was the right moment. For several months, Madsen's court date kept getting postponed and rescheduled until it was finally supposed to happen in September 2019. However, the attacker didn't show up, so an arrest warrant was issued. Madsen was eventually taken into custody and made a court appearance later in the month. After that, another hearing was set for November and Madsen was once again released. It appears this case was settled quietly. Zachary Madsen didn't appear on any sentenced prisoners lists and his court case didn't appear in any records. It's likely Madsen either reached some kind of agreement with WWE and Bret Hart or Zachary's lawyer was able to declare him mentally unstable. Unfortunately, Madsen would get into trouble again. In September 2021, Zachary Madsen was arrested for shoplifting in Denver, Colorado. Madsen would be released on a $1 bond and his only punishment was being restricted from the area he stole from. In fact, the fines for the court case cost him more, which came to just under $200. Since this and the Hall of Fame incident, Zachary Madsen, by all accounts, has stayed out of trouble. As of October 2023, it appears that Madsen is living with his parents in Littleton, Colorado, a suburb of Denver. It's unknown if Zachary has a job or is doing any work, but given his repeated criminal record, it would make him difficult to hire. Zachary Madsen isn't the only fan that has taken things too far. To see what these 15 other WWE fans did, watch this video.